again. I'm Deb Campus, and I hope you guys are having a great day. So uh, for this video, I wanted to share with you guys how I, how I just was able, not able to, but kind of estimate or the weather for the Pacific Crest Trail during the months that I will be through hiking. So it's really important that you understand that it's during the months that I will be through hiking because it could change for anybody. It depends to when you start. If you start in March, it'll be a whole different uh, weather to expect. So uh, so it is important for you to find your own pace and I will refer again to my first video. And then after finding your own pace, you can actually place yourself at a certain month on the tra on the trail. And then by from that point on, it's easy. So this is not a precise number, not at all. It's just an estimation, just a guideline for myself. I needed to make serious gear decisions and also um, for my bouncing box. So for me, it was really important to know the average weather while I'm gonna be there, which is April, May, June, July, August, and September. Another thing is that um, just like the pacing, I also needed to establish my, my resupply points because I'm gonna be basing myself, the weather on the resupply points and the mile markers. And the third one is finding the elevation for the trail because some resupply points have different elevation than the trail elevation. And after that, I, was, I only had to find the high and low averages for those resupply points. All right, let's get started. So, as if I would advise you to watch my other, my previous video about pace, because this is actually going to be based on those, that, that data, including the resupply points that I chose to stop by, because this is how I'm going to base myself to find the, the temperature at a certain month. And also, um, because of the pace, um, the way the way that I was able to calculate my pace now I know where I will be in Mount Laguna in what month Julian what month I'm going to be in Julian and Lake Isabella what month I'm going to be in Lake Isabella uh, Sierra City what month I'm going to be in Sierra City and so forth and so on so knowing my pace it allows me to place myself on the trail at a given month all right, so also I have the mile marks here because it's important for me to find the elevation for that mile mark. So elevation is very important, will play a big role in uh, the temperature. And on this website right here, um, I will add the URLs that I'm using also on my description, on the description for this video, but it tells me that for each 1,000 feet that I go up in elevation, the temperature decreases um, between five, between three and five degrees Fahrenheit. So if it's cloudy, it increases 3.3 Fahrenheit. If it's sunny, it increases five degrees Fahrenheit. So I actually thought it was the opposite, but this is what explains about the temperature. And keep in mind also precipitation also increases as you go up in elevation. Precipitation including snow, um, in, uh, snow, um, rain, sleet, or even wind, which is not precipitation, but it's part of the climate. Okay, so, all right, so what I did first, I found out the elevation for the trail because if you see right here on this little resupply points that are in red it means I have to hitch to those towns and what it means is that um, not not Kennedy Meadows this one should be black because I think Kennedy Meadows it's on the trail um, sometimes the city has a it's a, the resupply point is at a lower elevation than the trail and my goal is to find out the temperature on the trail not on the resupply point itself so okay starting campo which is on in the trail on the trail it's this is the elevation and mount laguna this is the elevation julian is elevation is at 4226 feet but the trail elevation is lower 
And how do I know this? How do I know the elevations for each resupply point on trail? I went here again on half miles PCT map and I will include this URL. It, they have the elevation profile of the entire PCT. So you can do here, you can download here for California and you can download here for Oregon and Washington. I obviously got both of them, but let me show you how California is the elevation profile. It's an awesome map, which you should download it just to have it on your phone available offline. Okay, so let me just increase the size. Okay, so starting right here, let's go to Mount Laguna, which is mile 42. Right here, see it gives you each two miles the elevation. So mile 42 right here, it's almost 6,000 feet in elevation. And then Julian, which is mile 77. Let's go right here, mile 77. It's right here. It's the elevation is less than 2,500. I put 2,500 on mine because I kind of had to guess. It doesn't give you exactly the points between the thousands points, but it's easy to guess or approximate, an approximate uh, guess, um, and so forth and so on. This is what I did to each resupply point. I looked on the elevation profile. And I put the elevation on the trail, on trail, not on the of the resupply point, because like I said before, some resupply points are not on trail. Okay, so after knowing my elevation, what I did is now I'm going to find the average high and low of the year for that month on that on that resupply point. So let's start right here with. Uh, Campo. Okay, let's start in Campo. Average high and low. So I went to this website and there are other websites that will give you also high and lows, uh, um, average high and lows of the year. But this one is a good one, U.S. Climate Data. So we're right here on the page United States. What we do is we find California. And since I'm going to be doing California first, so I'm going to keep this page open and I'm going to find Campo. Campo, Campo. Right here. Campo. So Campo gives me, and I'm going to be in April in Campo, April high and lows and also the precipitation. So I'm going to also take note of precipitation in April in Campo. And I'm going to show you right here my map of the, my for the precipitation. This is the precipitation, see, Campo. So I'm going to take this note right here too. All right. So going back to temperatures, I just kept finding the high and lows for each resupply point and in case here of Julian that is a different elevation what I did is since this is a lower elevation so the same way that the temperature goes up it also goes down for each 1000 feet of elevation so right here Julian is higher but the trail is lower so it's about almost 2000 feet lower in elevation than Julian. So what I did is just, you just go back to California on the climate. Um, and I believe Julian is not on the list here. So we kind of have to just search. If you can't find the, the that place, the resupply point on that website, you can also Google Julian High. Um, Julian, California, average temperatures. Okay, so see right here, it actually Google already gives you for May, because I'm going to be in May in Julian, the highs are 70, the lows are 46, but the trail is a lower temperature. So if I'm going down 2,000 
feet in elevation, then we are going to subtract, uh, we're going to add, I'm sorry, we're going to add because we're going lower, so we're gaining temperature, uh, 10 degrees. So it's going to be 80 and here is going to be 56, the low, the highs and the lows. So that's exactly what I did. 80 and 54. I don't know why I put 54. It's just as long as it's just closed. And this is what I did to each one. Sometimes if you cannot find the town itself, you can always look for a town that is close to it through that map, the BCT map that I showed on the first on the video about finding my pace, about calculating my pace on the BCT. Okay. So, uh, and just, just so like right here, Lake Isabella, if it's at a lower temperature, the trail is at a higher temperature. So I was able to find the temperature in Lake Isabella and, and decrease the temperature because the, the trail is higher. Same thing in here in Bishop. I was able to find the temperature in Bishop high and lows, but since the trail it's much higher temp uh, elevation i decrease about 20 degrees in temperature 20 to 30 degrees i know bishop gets very hot in the summer but up in the mountains where the trail is it's actually the high and the lows are 65 and 35. and that's what i did all the way through stahican don't forget the red ones here are this, the three supply points that are not on trail. And then I was able to come up with this chart right here. It, it created a chart for my data for each resupply point. So on top of this, I was able to then make decisions about my gear. For example, let's look at right here between Campo and Idlewild. Okay, these are pretty much the same temperatures until we get to as we start going up in elevation, which is Warner Springs, Idlewild, Big Bear, it's the highest elevation with the lowest temperature here. And Wrightwood, and then as we go down in elevation, which is Agua Dolce, uh, Hiker Town, Tehachapi, see how the temperature is starting to go up. All the way to Canada Meadows, the temperatures here are pretty high. Right here. And then the Sierras go back to low. North California, Northern California temperatures go high again. As you can see, Sad Valley is the hottest place because it's the low, one of the lowest places in California that we're gonna, that I'm gonna pass by. And then North uh, Oregon can also be a little bit hot. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind: this is a general guideline for the resupply point. Of course, in the Sierra, we're gonna be way higher than 10,000 feet of elevation. And that makes the temperature even colder. Um, you know, this is just the temperatures for each resupply point. It's not mile by mile on the PCT, which of course, but it's just to give you, give me an idea about my gear and making gear decisions. And with this in mind, I also gather the precipitation um, information for each month that I'll be on the PCT. And then he also gave me a graphic. So starting from Campo and in the beginning, you still get a, you know, maybe one or two days of rain and then it goes low. Starting uh, Agua Dolce all the way to Kennedy Meadows, it's none, zero. And then uh, in uh, the Sierras, maybe a little bit, but as we go through Oregon and at the end in Washington, the precipitation increases significantly. And again, this is just according to the, each resupply point. It's not by, mile by mile on the PCT, which would be a different graphic. But if you summarize this, what the summary would be for my my through hike but for my hike throughout the, the the trail so if for you it has to be something different because if you're starting in march it's a total different graph graphic 
graph. So then you have to find out for yourself and do these calcul calculations. But this is how I was able to find my, the precipitation and temp temperatures average for my hike. So that is it. This is how I was able to make a little graphic graph for uh, the weather on the PCT and applying everything together I was able to make decisions about my gear and where not to try to avoid not to overpack. Um, try to uh, also have the lightest gear whenever possible. Adjusting my pace, so if I know that at the end of October it's going to be probably there's beginning of October there's a chance of snow then I have to adjust my pace to this. Alright, so I hope it was helpful and if you are through hiking next year let me know how you have been able to kind of figure out the weather for your through hike or you don't care, you don't mind at all. Just let me know in the comment section below. It's good for us to all exchange ideas and learn from each other. All right, I will see you guys soon. Have a really good day. All right, bye. Peace.